Divas, it's Ingrid here. I'm with the husby. Hi, this everyone. is Chris, he's one of our coaches at ingridana.com. So funny. Um, we were, um, we got the dogs, and um, we were just talking about how the boom, there's a big boom coming at the moment. There's a social boom because everyone is coming on to social media. I was going to do a rude joke there, and everyone's not doing it in the room. <laughs> there's also that, there's a baby boom, and there's also a divorce boom happening right now. And we were thinking, how do we, I don't know why this is happening for me today where it doesn't come up like life. Oh, it kind of is now. Okay. Oh, I'll just stay here. Hi, this is good lighting. <laughs> I'll just stay where I look younger. Um, just kidding. Hey, Shaylee, gorgeous. I've been thinking about you. I hope you're doing well. We're talking about the divorce boom. I'm making jokes and the baby boom and the social era boom. Hello. I love Jay Lee. Okay, I saw that thing about your, the bitch icon thing anyway, I, was, I got the same. Anyway, so we're thinking, how have we not gotten divorced yet? And I thought we were doing pretty well considering, you know, all these people that barely see each other, Chris was saying, and now having to like stay together 24 seven. But Chris and I, because we live together, we work together, we're married, we run a business together. We've been in this sort of, date for like five solid years and I was in isolation for five years hey <laughs> babes babies and divorces coming oh my god for sure yeah we've been in isolation like for years right kind of really just very diligently working and I think I was saying to Chris that I wanted to share today I've got, I've got to share that oh hi Jerrica and it's like the fear that um there can be, you know, there's so much. Hey everyone, hey Michelle, I'm here with Chris. We've just been talking about divorces and babies and what's happening right now that Chris and I have been kind of isolated together for years. <laughs> hey Raquel. And um, when we first started, and I think that's what's happening a lot right now, like people's egos are getting, hey gorgeous, as I like being called Ingi. My daddy used to call me Ingi. Okay, so, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, like, oh my God, like, you know, we do have an expiry date, ego and fear is coming up. We, um, I know a little bit about that topic. Cool. And um, so there's all this sort of like fear um, around, you know, how, you know, what's going to happen right now, but even around the fact like, oh my God, you know, like we are vulnerable. Um, life is fragile. Um, how do I want to spend it? Um, people are getting triggered um, and if we don't know how to process that emotion and really we get we can go into blame and attack and when Chris and I um, first started working together he'd lost his job uh, that's a whole other story um, due to family drama um, he left a very secure job to go to work with my family and that didn't work out it wasn't his fault it was to do with my family <laughs> and we really had very little time to make things work so it was sort of like thrown into this fire almost that's what it felt like um, to some degree and there was a lot of fear around you know like would it work and I was like pushing and pushing and it was originally my business but then he came and it was a steep learning curve for him and um, we had to really decide like okay well, how are we going to pro? I wish I knew other things too. Like we should have really had more coaching and support. Um, I think during the journey um, that it, we would get triggered and that um, I think I could have processed some of my emotion better. Like, oh my God, I just, these are the core feelings that are coming up rather than like making it about Chris or what he wasn't doing. Or um, I also did feel there were elements of you know, a bit of resentment in the end also around how much how hard I was working because Chris comes from a very different background to me um, and you know it was already I've come from an employee background he's come from an employee background that's a great way to put it and I came from an entrepreneurial my parents are entrepreneurs you know I was always told not to be a princess and you know my parents were really pretty poor when we were growing up um, you know they had a house they had a uh, factory under the house where they started making wax halis for depilatory hair removal. My grandparents would pack boxes under the house uh, for free. 
Um, my mother was a beauty therapist. We had a beauty therapy um, place under our house as well. And then my dad literally dug under the house to create this factory. Um, and that, you know, really oh, embedded um, this very deep, you know, hard work ethic and that no one was, my, my parents would always say to me, don't say sorry, Ingrid, just don't do it. Uh, they were lovely, quite strict and lovely and generous and strict and very hardworking. And, you know, I think I learned really good qualities from them um, about follow through and diligence and getting it done. <laughs> and doing whatever it took. And really. doing really whatever it took. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of gold there. And then there's the polarity of being quite fear-based and pushing and working and never resting. I remember years ago, I had this mass in my uterus and I had three surgeries. I almost lost my life. I got blood poisoning and I was on intravenous antibiotics. I had three surgeries, the whole thing. Anyway, I remember um, healing and resting and my dad like trying to get over like it was bad like I got blood poisoning I mean, it was in it was just terrible they I hemorrhaged during the operation they cut me open they wanted to take out my fallopian tubes it was a mess anyway I remember my dad coming into my room and saying Ingrid hey Sarah hey Savriti hey Pram thank you um when are you gonna start working again when are you gonna start working when are you gonna move like go 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 push 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 my mum's a lot better but still to this day and growing up she would have weeks of almost being bedridden like come home my mum's quite successful these days come home from overseas iron her own clothes do 10 loads of laundry cook three meals just constantly constantly just going and that's a polarity of what's not really healthy um but i've i've gotten to a level in my journey where um, you know, there's no blame or shame. That's something that I also teach my daughter. Don't blame, don't shame, take responsibility, take the gold and leave the rest and rewire the rest and heal the rest so that you don't fall into the patterns of other people's kind of, um, toxic habits, right? <laughs> so the gold part of it was uh, this very diligent, um, kind of way of being, um, where I see sometimes people, they just give up too quickly. You know, they think they got it all wrong, but entrepreneurship, you know, it isn't easy. It doesn't mean that you can't stay, start making money quickly. It's another thing. Like don't go around in circles, learn how to make money quickly. Why do you need to learn how to make money quickly? Because if you don't have a trust fund and a sugar daddy or a high income job to back you or a million bucks in savings, even a million, you'll go through that money quick pretty easy to spend money. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I do like to shop. <laughs> but seriously, like you just run through it, right? But I just want to invite you to think also about, I'm sort of going off on a tangent, I'll come back to relationship, but accumulation, you know, a $500 sale, a thousand dollar sale. I've got a girl that's just in my six figure diva course today. She's very, very talented, just on that precipice of really making sales, really getting on video, really showing up. And I'm like, look, it doesn't matter if you're selling a 3K or 5K or even like this week, five, 15,000, sorry, not 15,000, <laughs> that's my manifestation, five $1,500 spots. So five $1,500 spots this week. Uh, what is that? I can't even do the math. Uh, but it's about over five thousand dollars now imagine if you did that every week you've got to be creative just if you feel like you're going to get thrown off one week i always turn up the volume my spirit guides my energy it's like turn up the volume i go into full creation and not from a place of fear always from a place of service how can you serve someone else this week what can you put to bet together be creative right when someone starts out sometimes at a lower price point they will then invest in a higher price point okay so when i was first also starting out you know i would say even things like you know you could do a two-week intensive with me and then if you want to upgrade to the higher level you can you know when people trust you there's a lot of fear initially when people come to work with you. It, are they, re is she really good, the real deal? Am I really gonna get the results? So if you're sort of more starting out, 
you can just start with like a two or three week intensive and then take them to the next level should they wish to go to that next level. It's great. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Chris and I, Chris is with me, you guys, if you're just tuning in. Anyway, we're going to go and chill, but honestly, um, hey, Jody. Um, I think really at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I did a beautiful exercise uh, with Chris when we're going through our healing work and it's just sometimes sitting together, you sit on a chair, face to face, looking at each other on a chair, you can do it standing up and each person puts um, their hand on the other person's heart and you just say to each other, you know, you have to take a practice and basically take a turn, each of you, kind of couldn't get that one out. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, I, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce her new name, Rhiannon. Ayana, I think. I'll reach out to you and get the pronunciation. But you put a hand on each other's heart and you feed back to each other like one thing. So, you know, I love how you show up for me. You know, I love that you're such a good father. I love Ingrid. So you go back and forward, back and forward and really start to have a deep level of gratitude. And you also have to like take responsibility and like really praise each other because often when the fear comes up, we can go into fight, flight, attack mode, blame. Okay. So taking the time to really praise and appreciate and also really taking responsibility for like, I am so scared right now. I'm not angry with you. I love you. I adore you, but I am so scared right now. Or I'm so angry or I feel like I've betrayed myself for years and I'm finally waking up to myself and I'm sad also about all the years that I've lost. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm sad. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we don't want to feel what we're feeling. Um, and so we go into attack. Okay. We don't even know what we're feeling. It's so suppressed sometimes because we just don't check in. And you can just simply do a ritual of, well, what's really going on for me? What's really going on for me right now? You know, what do I need? What does my soul need? What does my spirit need? What do I need in relationship? Write it down and then lovingly ask for it. Ask for what you need. You know, yelling, screaming, you know, sometimes it happens and forgive yourself and apologize. And sometimes you probably just need to stamp it out, cry it out, scream it out alone. And then learning to process the emotion. You're allowed to ask for what you need. You're allowed to express your emotion, but it's how you do it with the other person, not to obliterate them, not to scare them, um, not to create more angst. Men tend to shut down a lot. Anyone will shut down if you're screaming and yelling at them and blaming them. So it's always a co-creation, isn't it? So um, I've had to learn a lot about this. <laughs> I think I would suppress and suppress and suppress and then get really angry, like so angry, so upset. Um, just so, like I, I didn't know because I was never taught. Like my growing up, I really wasn't listened to. I had, I was almost like, I was silenced. It was like, don't speak up too much don't like the children should not be heard it was kind of like that a lot and um i had a very very strong father and a very strong mother who i adore um but quite overpowering and that's another reason why i am quite fierce too because um i really had to for so long and there's a softening that you probably noticed in my energy but i had to fight so long to be heard but the most important person that we uh, need that needs to hear us right is ourselves it's the same with visibility you know we want to be seen we want to be seen but we're, we don't take the time to see our own selves to take the time to know ourselves to to feel into this deep sense of love and presence and respect of self where your voice your ability to show up your ability to speak up whether it be on live video whether it be on sales calls whether it be on webinar whether it be in relationship comes from a really deep level of understanding and appreciation 
and gratitude and forgiveness and like I'm okay with me energy that's what it is perfectionism uh, paralyzes perfectionism slows you down perfectionism also um, it's just a self-saboteur because you're basically you're in the vibe and the belief that I'm not enough so let me make myself better and more and then I'll allow myself to make more receive more it's the same with love it's the same with money it's all fucking aligned whatever nourishes you whatever gives you more abundance more freedom it's also very aligned love relationship money right ah <sighs> so take a deep breath today I yes that's it's so beautiful like it's like well the surface might be I'm angry with him or her or who, whatever your situation is right so you're so sad at the moment Jody why are you so sad you let me know let me know if anyone really needs deep emotional support right now and you're not okay just put up um, or they'll say say I'm not okay and I'll reach out okay uh, it's okay to not be okay <laughs> Like t when you trust that you will move through it, right? You'll move through it. You'll move through it. I'm moving through it. Sometimes you can feel like you're dying. You can feel like it's a death. It's, ah, oh, you know, and what I do is I just go, okay, I know that this will move. I call on my spirit guides. I call on deep love. I call on the divine to support me. I send beautiful love vibes into every single cell of my being. I ask for support when I need it. Uh, I go to sleep, I get good as much sleep as I possibly can. I, I woke up this morning at 4 a.m. I'll probably end up getting quite tired later today, but quite a lot of energy things that I need to do. Um, like quite a lot, there's stuff that I need to, to get done today. I've got some meetings with team. I've already done like two full on emails today. I've already gone through all this scripting that I have to go through for a project that I'm working on. And I've learned like, okay, you know when is enough you know when is enough enough is enough you know like it's enough stop 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 replenish stop ah <sighs> it's like taking a deep big deep energetic breath and then going back it back at it the next day or two days later you know you see a lot of people doing things you know you see people like me i'm a very deliberate high action person right but I do stop and I do pause and I do shut off social media when I need to. You need to understand what you need and you need to work in the rhythm. Consistency. Consistency is key. It doesn't have to be hours a day. You know? You can make great money and have great flow from just doing one or two, three, four things every single week for 15 minutes. Like just very pointed email your list get on video craft a new offer make it fun think about the transformation that these people are going to receive keep it light speak up be clear i'm walking up a hill right now <laughs> i'm really dedicated to exercising at the moment and walking because I'm very vain and I don't want to get fat, just kidding, but that's partly true. But honestly, really it's about making sure that I'm running for, from my cup runneth over. So I can only do the work I do. I can only work with hundreds of students. I can only be creative and download and attune and use my psychic power and send out prayers to the world and come up with new content and redo all my content and support staff and support you know, my clients and students and do everything that we do and be a mother and be a partner and be a good friend if I take care of myself have to I've done it the other way so it's slowing down enough trusting that all is well it will pass we're gonna pass through this it is intense right now but some of the feelings that you may be feeling are like the death rebirth cycle so breathe into it 
be patient, be loving, be kind to yourself. Okay, I'm sending you guys so much love. A million blessings. Mm -hmm. Kisses.